Greetings Gimps, hello and welcome back to another video. Today what we're going to be going over is the subject topic, why skateboarding is dying. Now I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but I've seen far fewer skateboarders getting into the sport this summer, far fewer people actually keeping motivated and staying into it. Now don't get me wrong, skateboarding is still doing pretty well, but as a business owner and having spoke to a bunch of other business owners of skate shops and whatnot, it's clear to see that skateboarding is on a bit of a downtrend at the moment, just with like views on YouTube for certain channels and whatnot. We're not going to mention who, but we all know that quite a few of the big channels are struggling to get views and even me with 114,000 subscribers, it's rare that I'll see over 10k views on a video. Obviously not complaining, I've worked hard to get to this point and I appreciate every single person that watches my videos, so don't get me wrong at all. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to try and motivate you all to continue skateboarding, give you solutions to how you can get over some of these humps that you might be experiencing, because I asked you 10 days ago if you decided to quit skateboarding or are finding it hard to find motivation, let me know why down below and I'm going to try and help you guys out and look into the questions of why skateboarding might be dying. Obviously dying is a bit of an extremist term, we all love skateboarding and we're all going to keep pushing forward regardless of what happens because that's just how skateboarders do but I'm going to be trying to help you guys as much as I possibly can in this video so all that being said let's flip over to this screen here's the question that I asked and we got 69 replies which obviously nice so what we're going to do is we're going to go through these one by one I might not touch over every single one of them but I'm going to do my best to help where I can Okay, let's go. The first one is by Garden State PR, and he says, living in the United States as an adult is very hard to be motivated to do anything physical after working all day every day. I skate as much as I can. Now, the thing about skateboarding is you really need to stick with it and like do it multiple times a week to actually see some progress. Otherwise, you're just going to be maintaining what you already have. And look, I get it. If you're working all day, you can find it difficult to find the energy to keep skateboarding at the end of it, especially because skateboarding is such a physically demanding activity and if you're working in construction or something like that, I can very much see why that might be difficult. But here's the solution in my opinion. If you're finding it difficult to find energy when you finish work, you might be wanting to change your diet or perhaps add some more exercise into your routine. Because first, when you try more exercise, you're going to be finding you have less energy, but you've got to think of it like extending your battery life. If you're getting tired by 6 p.m., if you get your body used to working out a little bit in the morning or maybe a touch in the evening, over time, your battery life is going to extend. So then you'll be tired at 8 p.m., 9 p.m. And if you're getting tired at 6 p.m. and you had a shitty lunch, maybe you ate some like crisps, bacon sandwiches, if you're just not eating some very high energy yielding foods, then it's clear to see why you're feeling super tired. If I could offer you some things to try, I would try Huel. This is a drink supplement, not sponsored at all, but they basically, you drink them like protein shakes. They're super nice and they have all the vitamins and minerals you need. So if you want to try something like that, that might help you quite well. There's a few replies on this one, so we're going to see this. Someone says, living as you, don't group the rest of us into your dead-end job. Okay, people just beefing underneath it. So I'll leave them to it. Let's go into the next one. I live in Canada. No indoor parks near me. Can only skate at least three good months in the weather is rain, windy, or snow. Now, this is something that I highly relate to living in the UK. There is barely any indoor skate parks. The nearest one to me is like 50-odd miles away. And then past that, it's about 100 miles away. So I definitely get where you're coming from. And it can be very difficult. But you just got to find places to skate where you can. If you've got a garden, if you've got a shed, if you've got a part of your house that maybe you can get away with throwing a carpet board down, just practice. And if you love it that much, this is what I would do if I was you. I would just get the carpet board and practice doing tricks like that. You can learn tricks. You could learn how to kick flip. You can learn how to heel flip. You can do a bunch of stuff just by carpet boarding. And if you want to try something that maybe you could skate indoors with and not cause too much noise or disruption, try the soft trucks because that is a pretty good use case for those. And you could actually get away with learning quite a few tricks because you can still pop off the board nicely. But but you don't have to have the impact of the wheels hitting like the ground or going through the floor. It's just going to be a lot easier time. And if you're going to be trying this, stick to the bottom floor of your house or apartment if you can, because you don't want to be falling through the floor. But obviously, if it's an apartment block, you should be fine anyway. They're built to withstand it. Okay, we've got 35 years old here, trying to come back after 15 years out of the board. And now I'm scared of being outside. And I always find an excuse to just don't go skate. It's too hot. It's too late. And there is too many people already in the street, etc. And even when I go through all of that shit and I manage to go to the skate park only 10 minutes of walking if there is someone there i just walk away and come back home it sounds stupid i know well if this is the if this is the situation and you're finding anxiety when you go out to do stuff like this and this is going to be the answer for a lot of these things if you're not putting the right fuel into your body if you're not eating well if you're not forcing your body to exercise when you need to i can see why you might be getting anxious when you're going out because think of it like this right your body is like a vehicle like a car if you put the worst fuel if you're putting 
like potato chips and oil and stuff into your car, then obviously it's not gonna run well. And your mind is just as linked to that as any other part of your body. So if you're putting in the wrong fuel, you're not gonna think as well. And your body is designed for thousands or hundreds of thousands of years of evolution to chase animals with spears and hunt for the tribe and bring back food. Like these are deeply ingrained reward systems that you need to satisfy still. Cause if you're not doing this kind of things, then you're gonna be feeling depressed. And it's not gonna be a blanket statement, all in all answer. But honestly, if you're finding it this way, just practice somewhere private, maybe in like a car park, somewhere like that make sure you're eating well make sure you're doing exercise even if it's just a bit of cardio buy like an exercise bike because obviously if you're anxious you don't want to go to the gym get yourself an exercise bike or a treadmill or something like that and just practice when you can and do it in private areas until the point where you feel comfortable enough that you want to go out and meet people maybe join some facebook pages and as you're 35 i would say there are definitely some facebook pages out there that can lead you to like different groups of dads skateboarding and there's a bunch of facebook groups of older skateboarders just look for one in your area and I'm sure you could probably make some great new friends and actually get to skateboarding a lot more than you would have done before. Okay this one here became alcoholic anxious and scared of the outside world not trying to be depressing that's just the answer I love your channel by the way I appreciate that man but I will say if you're drinking a lot of alcohol maybe you might be best talking to the people that love you find out try and find things in your life that offer rewards that aren't drugs, alcohol. As someone who has really been through it here, like I grew up with a heroin addict father. I spent a few years addicted to what, what, what I'll address in this video is the devil's snowflake, but I think we all know what that is. Yeah, I spent many years addicted to that and I can only tell you that exercise was the way out for me and just finding people that share the same things as you. Video gaming, I absolutely love that. I spend most of my time outside of skateboarding, gaming if I'm not making a video. So just find things that you love, do them and replace that with the alcoholism. I know it's gonna be difficult as one day at a time but honestly just try it just take one step at a time don't think about the future don't think about 10 days two weeks one month from now just do the first day see how you feel do the second day and if you relapse every now and then that also happens it happened to me certainly you just got to take it as it comes and do your best to get through it there are so many resources you can use online and with phones but honestly i'm no therapist but that's just my personal experience try your best to get over it by doing things you love and that for me is skateboarding and i'm sure it is for you too just do it as and when you can i think I think this one is fair enough here. Bad ankle break when I was 18. Once I hit 30, my ankle started hurting earlier and earlier into sessions. Now at 37, just fingerboard. Can't risk injury and missing work. That is, I think that is like one of the most fair things to say. If you have a workplace where you really need to be on your feet and doing things and you can't risk the injury, that's totally fair enough. If you still want to do skateboarding, obviously there are things you can do to minimize the risk. Like you can wear an ankle brace to keep your ankle nice and stationed in one position while you're skateboarding. That can really help help you but if you're into fingerboarding and you don't want to risk anything that's fair enough i wouldn't want to encourage you to go skateboarding you break your ankle and then you can't work or feed your family so put your family first obviously skateboarding is a hobby a luxury at the end of the day and you don't want to force it upon yourself if you've got other things that are more important to you oh neville i relate to this one a lot i gave up after discovering the free party scene say no more now i'm old hurt too quickly and heal way too slowly see when i was like 11 i started skateboarding skated on and off till i was about 17 and then i went to college didn't really skate at all in that time because i'd moved away from all my friends and then when i moved back to the town where all my friends lived everyone was just getting on it they were drinking they were sniffing they were doing all kinds of nefarious activities and i got sucked into that just as well as everybody else did but yeah i 100 percent relate to that you've just got to honestly get back into it as and when you can i think i got back into skateboarding when i was 24 25 and i've been making videos ever since then that was why i started because i wanted to make videos on it honestly you've just got to get out there and enjoy the outside world get to the skate park find some friends to do it like i said earlier get on the facebook groups you can find motivation to get skateboarding and if you heal super slow you're just not putting the right things into your body to help you heal like for me i use creatine which is what a lot of gym goers use to get themselves healing faster after like a muscle tear or break to make your muscles bigger and it really does work for skateboarding injuries too and also i'd recommend seeing a physiotherapist and if you've got the money you can get stem cells which are basically they'll fix you up like nothing ever before i've heard tony hawk and many other professional skateboarders talk about them basically they inject them into where you had the injury and they heal you up like nothing ever before so 
So I definitely recommend looking into that if you've got the money to do so. Okay, just eat you. I just feel like sometimes got motivated, sometimes not because I'm skating alone without anyone and just practicing alone. It might help if I have friends who can learn skateboarding with me. Okay, now I get this one 100% as well. Obviously you wanna have someone to share your successes and the fun in skateboarding with, but maybe you don't have anyone of your similar age group or anything like that. Like I said earlier in the video as well, I'd recommend going on Facebook, trying to find groups, Instagram groups, Reddit groups, even if it's just somewhere where you can share your progress online with other people, like a little forum or something, I would recommend just giving yourself motivation to do that. And also if you haven't, film some of your skateboarding so that you can really track your progress. And if you wanna get into the content creation community, even if you're just posting like little snippets on YouTube or shorts or whatever it may be, you can find a lot of motivation through that. For me, I only have like one or two friends that skateboard, but we all share our own accomplishments and do it together. So, and for me personally, obviously I like the video game side of things. So I like to gamify what I do. And to do that, I track my progress. I write all the tricks down that I can do. I track everyone that I want to learn and how I'm going to learn it. So you've just got to find ways to adapt skateboarding and make it work for you. If you really want to get into it, there are so many things that you can do, but I recommend just tracking tracking your progress, watching and critiquing all your own stuff, and then looking back every six months to see how far you've come. That's what really motivates me to continue. By the way, I'm skipping over the ones that I've already previously answered. If you see me ride past your comment, it's nothing personal. I just feel like I've already given the advice to a previous person and don't want to keep repeating myself in the video. Okay, this one here. I quit skating when I was 13, trying to get back into it now. Being almost 26, everyone at my local seems to be so way above my level that I feel very stupid trying to relearn how to push and do basic tricks and fear that I might be getting in the way of their own tricks and lines. Also, work makes it very difficult for me to skate consistently as I can only go once or twice a week at most, which slows progression nearly to a halt. It's been a very frustrating experience overall. Even though I've been pushing through it, it at times feels like I'll never even reach the level I was as a kid, which wasn't even that high as to begin with. Okay, well, this sounds like the premise for a comeback story right here. Honestly, take your board, take your carpet board, take a board in your garden. If you've got some space, go to a car park, practice tricks and just do it every moment you can if you really wanna learn something. And I honestly, I think that for your own mental health, Learning things is one of the best things you can do. Humans are designed to learn new skills, and I believe you can do this into any age, to be honest. My brother, who is over 40 years old, has been learning how to skate, and he can do shovets now, and he's actually getting pretty decent, and he didn't start till he was 40. And the only difference between him and most people is the fact that he eats healthily, goes to the gym, and just looks after his mind. I'm not saying everybody has to start going to the gym and it's the solution for everything, but trust me, if you've got issues in your life, going to the gym and eating healthily will always be the best start to a better version of you. And that is without a doubt. Fair enough, if you try it and you say it really doesn't help you and doesn't make you feel better, you are one of few. But if that's not for you, it's not for you. But you can't honestly knock it if you haven't tried it yourself. But yeah, for this one, I would say there's definitely opportunity for a comeback story there. Just practice and get tricks down in your own time. And honestly, when it comes to things like getting in the way of people's lines, people that skate and do lines and are confident in the skate parks, they're looking out for you. So unless you're completely unaware and just riding in front of them, then you're really not going to get in the way, in my opinion. Like I'm always looking out for other skateboarders and other people in the skate park and working my way around them, as opposed to them having to worry about if I'm coming towards them or this, that or the other. The skateboarder who's actively fraction around the park is always looking out for everybody else at least if they're a decent human being that is and you should never feel stupid trying to relearn or do basic stuff the basics are the most important and if anything the person that tries to rush into the hardest tricks they should be the one that feels stupid because that's how injuries happen and if you're the person sitting at home doing nothing then they should feel the most stupid out of everybody because the person that's actually trying to learn something is actively trying to better themselves and i don't see how anyone can call that stupid in my opinion so honestly you have my blessing get out there Go and learn some tricks and get to the skate park when you feel comfortable. Just don't rush anything and do it in your own time. And like I said before, film your progress and make it a comeback story. You can do it, man. Honestly, I believe in you. All right, guys, well, I'm going to leave it there for this video. I've already spoken quite a lot and I'm obviously going to have to cut this down a bit. But if I didn't touch on your question, don't worry. If you like this video and it does well, I'll definitely do a follow up where I answer a bunch more of the questions, even just from this thread as I've still got like 50 odd more to go through. But I hope this offers some motivation to the people that I answered the questions of and I'll see you guys in the next next video. <laughs>